Hi guys, so I'm actually inserting this little intro kind of after I've already edited this full video because when I watched back my original intro, I realized how much I left out and how bad of a job I did explaining what this video is. This video is definitely different from my normal style, so I think I was nervous about that and I kind of just like skipped over a lot of details. So I had seen someone show a old nail art book they had and I wondered why I had never thought of looking for books about nails. So I went on eBay and one book that popped up a lot was this one is the Wa Book of Nail Art. So I looked into it a little bit and I thought it was really interesting so I got it and wanted to do a video on it. This book is very creative, it has a lot of different stuff in it. I also forget to mention it's called like a fanzine and I didn't know what a fanzine was before this or my research on the author, which I talk about the author a lot in this video. A fanzine is essentially like a magazine put together basically using a lot of different like pictures, almost like photocopied, kind of like how you see. And even though it is a nail art book, it also has little like fun pop-ups like this little playlist, who was in the company at the time, and just like other stuff like that. So now that I've given you a little- So now I feel like I've given you a little bit more context on just this video and this book. So now I'm gonna give it to previous Emily who did this very quick and brief, uninformative intro. And hopefully that will suffice now that I've added this little part in. Hi guys, today we are going to be recreating two designs out of this nail art book. This book was published in 2012, so we're gonna have some really cool throwback designs to do and look back on. But also while I do my nails, I'm going to talk about the author Charmadine Reed and the history behind this book because there's actually a lot of it and I really wanna talk about her. I feel like it would be a huge disservice to her to do these designs and not mention who she is, what she's about, what she's doing now, and everything that she has done for like the nail art community and women in general. So I will talk about her while I do my nails and the designs, but first we have to pick those designs. So in this book there are 25 tutorial guides for the nail art, so what I'm going to do is get a random number generator and I'm gonna have it pick 1 through 25 and that's the ones that we will do. I'm gonna be honest with you, some of these are a little simple so I'm gonna just do a whole design on each hand. Just from the cover you can see like there's marble, cheetah print, blocking, a letter. It's really cool, really fun stuff. Okay, 1 through 25. Let's see what it gives us. 12. Okay, 12. Let's see what number 12 is. And number 12 is stained glass. Oh my gosh, I love that. You guys know I love stained glass nails. That's so fun. And here's the design that it actually shows. So those do look opaque, but the little tip up here says if you can find translucent or jelly polishes and you can create some truly amazing glass effects, which of course jelly and translucent gels are so common now, but all of these designs were actually meant to be done with regular nail polish. Again, it was 2012 and gel was really only something that people used in a salon. So what they say we'll need is yellow nail polish, blue nail polish, pink nail polish, lime green nail polish, and black nail art pen. So let's go grab those things. Transparent yellow, transparent blue. I think I'm gonna use this pink right here. Lime green. And not a black nail art pen, but a black nail art liner. So we have our materials and we will follow the how-to guide, but I've gotta put on some nails first really quick. So I am starting off with my peel off base coat. So honestly, before this book, I had never heard of Wa nails before, which surprises me and doesn't because I honestly wasn't super into painting my own nails at home with the nail polish. I pretty much always did get them done in a salon and I pretty much only ever got them like a solid black color. So I definitely wasn't like searching up designs and stuff like that. But now I'm gonna go in with a regular base over top of this. But before there was Wa Nails, there was the founder of Wa Nails, Charmadine Reed. Now I actually did quite a bit of research on her and listened to interviews and podcasts and read some articles and stuff like that so I could talk about her in this video because once I started learning about her, I started learning like what she's done and what she's doing now. And I really wanted to just like talk about that a little bit in case you also have never heard of Wa Nails or her before. We haven't really done coffin in a while, so I'm gonna do extra long sculpted coffin today. These are a prey tips. So I'll start at the beginning. 
Charmadine Reed is from England in the UK. She first went to school for art and design and then got a degree in fashion, communication, and promotion, and then went on to be a stylist and work at a magazine. And before she created the WA Nails, she actually had a WA magazine. And the WA magazine was essentially a feminist hip hop magazine for women. And I'm gonna be applying these tips with what I have left of this gel. I keep forgetting to order it. It's like the second I am done with it, I completely forget. I should probably do it like literally right now because I don't even know if I'll have enough to finish this set. I have to grab something else. But anyway, back to it. Now, in many places, I didn't see what WA stood for. I actually had to like really search it out and it stands for We Ain't Hoes. So that's kind of funny. And WA Nails came about because she was frustrated that she couldn't get the same designs she was seeing on the runway and other parts around the world. So she decided to create her own specifically after one event where she wanted a Dior double French, which she describes as like a white half moon and a white tip. And the person doing her nails either couldn't do it or wouldn't do it or didn't know what it was. So after leaving that salon, she decided to open her own where you could get whatever design you wanted on your nails. She could see the vision and the future of nails in fashion and culture in the UK and really wanted to jump on it. Now, after hearing all of that, you may think that if you search her up today, she's gonna be like a nail tech or be working on her own nail product line, but that's actually not the case, which we will get into in a moment, but first we have to start our design. So we are ready to start the first design now and reading through this, so we're going to follow the steps in this book instead of just kind of going off on what I usually do. And step one is using your yellow nail polish brush, paint three dabs on the nail, spaced far apart, hold the brush flat so you get a squarish mark. So I'm going to do it their way for the most part, like when applicable. Of course, I don't have like a black nail art pen, but I'm going to follow it to the best of my ability. And you guys know I've done a lot of stained glass designs, but really just doing this step-by-step -step is what's gonna like keep it true to the like 2010s nail art. I really wanna keep it that vibe. So let's start with the yellow. Oh my gosh, I'm dumb too. They show the steps right here, like pictured. I'm gonna follow this layout too, cause why not? So we will do our yellow here and try to do blocky pieces holding the brush flat. Hopefully my spacing on this is okay. I'm definitely doing this on a, uh, you know, bigger scale. I feel like that's good there. So today, Wa Nails doesn't really exist. And what it just seemed like to me was that she did love nail art, but her passion was more being a entrepreneur and like innovator within the beauty space through like business and technology and not necessarily be focused on nails themselves. From what I've gathered, her goal is to be like a businesswoman and help other women do the same thing. But now step two is to paint a few blue dabs close to but not overlapping the yellow. I say that because during her time in the nail industry, she definitely didn't keep herself in like the nail industry bubble. She really involved technology in what she was doing with her business and launched Beauty Stack, which was like a beauty service booking app as well as doing like a VR app to try different nail colors, which is really cool. Now we need to add some pink and be careful not to touch the other colors. And this color is a little more opaque than I remember, so let me go find a new jelly pink. Okay, this color is a little bit darker than I like for a pink, but we're gonna have to work with it. It is really hard to get in between these little lines with just the nail brush definitely overlapping and having to clean it up a little bit. Beauty Stack wasn't just like a generic booking service app. It focused mainly on images and visual menus to link clients and professionals. And for this idea, she was one of the first ever black women in the UK to raise venture capital funding from Local Globe and Index Ventures. Step number four is to fill in the remaining gaps with lime green nail polish. Unfortunately, Beauty Stack and the Wa Nail Salon were both kind of killed by the pandemic, which led her to create the Stack World. And I will come back to this and talk about the Stack World and what she's doing like today during our next design because we are on our final step, which is using our black liner outside all of the colors to create a stained glass effect. Here's how everything turned out with just using the brushes from the gels. It was honestly really difficult. And with my stained glass designs, I think I do the outline before I fill it in. And I feel like that makes it easier to kind of like stain the lines and make sure everything is filled together and then do like a second coat of the liner afterwards. But let's outline now. I might have to go back in and like fill in a couple 
little sparse corners or something like that that I didn't get. I think I also made way too many different little shapes. In my head I was like, oh, this is gonna take me no time. These designs are so simple, but they're really not. I can't imagine doing this with actual nail polish too. That would take so much work. because You can't really go back and fix things before they dry like you can with gel. Like that's some dedication. It's also kind of difficult to tell between the green and the yellow with these gels if they're like right next to each other. Even just doing this in blobs still takes so much time. I think whenever I had done like 10 nails of French stained glass nails, I could be misremembering, but I think it took me like 16 hours or something absolutely insane. With this book mentioning the nail art pen, honestly, I feel like it brings back a lot of memories. I do not remember where my mom used to get them, but I do remember that they were always dried up. Okay, I feel like this wasn't looking as finished as I was hoping it would, putting on the black. So I'm going over with a second coat of the color just because I feel like it's not that opaque and the green and the yellow look really similar and it just looks kind of washed out. So I feel like it's looking so much better now and I'm a lot happier with this. So now let's put on a top coat and just seal everything in nicely. Their instructions don't say to do a top coat, but I feel like that's probably a given and that's probably in like one of the basic things of the book, but you know. So here we have the stained glass nails and here's just like a little comparison. I feel like they came out cute and actually a little similar to their design, so I'm glad about that. So now we need to pick a new design and so I'm gonna get my number generator out again. Okay, let's see if I can do this. There you go. It did, seven. Let's see what seven is. Two, five, six, and seven. Okay, we have basket case. So here are the nails. It's kind of like a interweaving design, which I feel like I can do and I feel like it would look really cool. So for this, all we need is a blue nail polish and a black nail striper. I'm assuming just like a brush, right? Because it says that make sure your striper brush bristles are neat at the end or they will ruin the design. So I'm assuming that's just like a brush. I guess I've never heard it called that before. Let's grab our blue. We already have our black liner out. Of course, step one, paint your nails with the blue base color allowed to dry. Thankfully, since we are using gel, we do not have much of a dry time. I'm using this blue gel by Tiny. Okay, it looks like this color is pretty opaque, so I think we will only need one coat. So in the present, Sharma Dean Reed is working on Stack World, which is an app that she created for women to buy and sell from each other and create community. And that stuff is like mainly like workshops, coaching, advice, entertainment, that type of thing. And she's also coming out with a new book, which is basically like a manifesto and advice for other women, which I will link in case anyone is interested because, you know, I can't link this for you to like buy directly from her. But now for step two, and that is using the black striper brush, start at the base of the nail and paint a slightly diagonal line from left to right. Maintain the same pressure of the brush, start to finish and ensure the line looks even. Lift the brush completely off the nail at the end for a clean finish. So let's do our first lines. It's definitely gonna be a little bit harder because I'm working with my opposite hand. Straight lines are also especially hard over like the curve of a nail. So we'll just get that a little fixed up. And now we just repeat this I don't know how many times I think I'm gonna do one more long diagonal this way okay it looks like I just jumped straight to step three because it was just really to just repeat the diagonal line three times except I did four because my nails are way longer <laughs> than these ones and we have a lot more room. So we're gonna go to step four now, which would be working from the tip of the nail, create three more lines, this time at a right angle to the first set. So of course there's so much more about this author and her impact in the nail world and for women and business in general, but that's where I'm going to leave it today. I really enjoyed learning about her and where this book came from. When I got this book, I could tell how much work went into it. So I really loved looking into the author and I feel like it's like a small slice of nail history. Of course, there is so much more and so many more people that made nails what they are today, but maybe that's for another time. But I don't know. Let me know if you guys like this. You want me to sort of like dive into that type of thing more? Could be fun. Then lastly, step five is finish by painting three more lines to create a triangular woven effect. I feel like it's not that perfect like triangle. I think that when they say slightly diagonal at first, in my head, I'm just like, ooh, diagonal. No, they literally mean like 
just barely slanted um and that's obviously where i went wrong with that so on these next ones i will definitely adjust my angle obviously we can see how uh skinny my triangle is and we want an equal lateral triangle not a i don't remember so let's hope these next ones are better so i was about to do this again and i could not figure out how i went wrong with this and i was trying to like map out how this would have made a like equal triangle so David's smart, so I went to talk to him and he pointed out that it says to do a right angle. And if you do a right angle in a triangle, it is not possible to do an equal lateral triangle, which they are wanting you to do. To have an equal triangle, each side needs to be the same angle, which would be like 60 degrees. And this definitely isn't a right angle here in their step where it says so. So I'm gonna try to shoot for that like 60 degrees on each one. And I think that helps a lot. I don't think my issue was starting at this much of an angle. I don't think it actually matters as long as that second set of lines makes a 60 degree angle from the first. So let's try that instead. I'm so glad it wasn't just me because I felt like I followed the instructions, but that's okay. I am going to do this set of lines a little bit less slanted than the first. And then just for my brain, I'm going to start actually doing these other ones first over here on the side. And then I feel like I actually need to do it almost like straight across here. I think technically I'm doing it upside down to what they show because their design looks like this and I'm holding my finger like this. So I'm doing it like that kind of. Does that make sense? I'm doing it like upside down. So the more straighter one would be up here for me. Okay, so I think for the next ones, I need to work on my spacing a little bit because my nails are so much longer that these big lines aren't creating like as small of a triangle. So the next one will have like probably four or five lines instead of like trying for three. All right, third time's a charm. Okay, this is definitely better. Got a little bit more of that like evenness going on. So let's just speed through the rest of this since this is just one design. All right, I really like how these turned out. I feel like they're very fun. They are kind of simple, but still a little tricky to do. And it's definitely a bit of like a throwback design. It makes me think of like the Tumblr era. Y'all know what I mean? So let's seal it all in now with a top coat. And here we are, here is our second set. Before I let you guys go, there are so many more designs in this book. So let me know if you want me to do like more of these. There's like these little designs that aren't necessarily tutorials with just like other random designs. It's like googly eyes, flying eyes going bananas, just like all different little kinds of things. And there's also a second book. She has two of these like nail art books. And I also got the second one. There's also stickers in the back. And lastly, I want to show you guys these pages because I could not believe it, but also I can. I mean, it like wasn't even my original idea, but it really goes to show that like nothing is original. But look at this. It's like draw your nails. I love it. Absolutely love that. It's a really good template too. You know what? I think it's like actually to scale almost. <laughs> this other book is definitely thicker. Like there's a lot more going on, but again, there's 25 tutorial designs in here and also a whole lot more. These books aren't necessarily like just nail art. They're like about the people and the community around them. But let me know if you guys want me to do any designs from this one or more of this one, or if there are any other nail art books that we should look into. I would love to kind of get like a series going on these. I feel like they are so fun. I don't know how it could have possibly taken me so long to see nail books. I guess I just never thought about it. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a like if you like this concept, like this video, and want me to continue on. It's really important to do whenever I do a new series because I feel like that really tells me if you guys do or do not like it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye!